would you say it's fair to say that in terms of anybody who intends to really do something in terms of what we're discussing tonight, confronting the world in which we live, uh, that one of the first lessons to be learned is the other side will play dirty. They are not fair. In other words, for all their claims of objectivity and so forth, they will not give you a fair shake. Do you think that's a, a legitimate observation? Absolutely. And sometimes I think it's planned, and sometimes it's just because now the, cons the humanist consensus has become so dominant that it's what I call the only thinkable. And so you, you, you don't know who's who. But undoubtedly there are some people who know what they're doing and determinately give you a dirty shake. The word fundamentalist is a good illustration. As soon as you use the word fundamentalist, you somehow or other you're, you're pushed aside. Uh, the word fundamentalist is a very strange word. It was born, and this is important to the whole discussion, it was born in the 30s out of those uh, great scholars, men like uh, uh, Dr. Machen, Robert Dick Wilson, men who were world-renowned world in the scholarship, standing for what they called the fundamentals of the faith as against the liberal theologically uh, theological onslaught at that time. The, the liberal sign, what they call the Auburn Affirmation, which really denied the very central thing to Christianity. These men said, we must respond. And so they just called, they weren't fundamentalists. They never would have used the word fundamentalist. They spoke of the fundamentals of the faith against the liberals. And you must remember the liberals in the churches have done a great deal to shaping the humanist consensus. Because liberal theology is only humanism using theological language rather than sociological languages or philosophic. They say exactly the same thing. They're rooted in the rationalism of the Enlightenment. There's not one single difference. Now, when these men stood up, they were scholars. I would want to insist. They were, they were scholars. Robert Dick Wilson was known over the whole world as one of the great Semitic scholars. They were, they were anything but what's now labeled in people's mind by, uh, in their thought, uh, as fundamentalists. They spoke up. Now, then, as they spoke up, um, Spoke up, against spoke up against the liberal theology, mm -hmm. which was taking over so many of the denominations, and which they saw quite properly was just rationalism in theological terms, and they spoke up against it. They weren't fundamentalists. They were speaking of the fundamentals. The word fundamentalist was gradually given to us by those who meant to cut it down. And they set us aside in this way. And it took on, and then unfortunately some of the people who followed along, and I have compassion for this, because the liberals took over the theological seminaries, the colleges, and so on. And so there was a, there was a tendency for the Bible-believing Christians to retreat and operate only in their smaller circles. And that connected with this Neoplatonism I keep talking about that has often existed, uh, where the only important thing was the soul instead of the body and the wholeness of life. You put them together, and what do you got? So what you have is that these people retreated, and uh, so their word fundamentalist did take on a connotation of narrow, unscholarly, and so on, partly maybe fairly, but partly very unfairly. And now it has been used, you watch, you, you now we call the <coughs> fundamentalist Islam, fundamentalist economics. It always means that people are those who stand upon principle as an absolute, in contrast to the present relativism, if you stop to think what it's talking about. Well, who are the liberals, and what role have they played in this development? The word liberal has been stolen. It's another word that's been stolen. Liberal, liberal in the English political, and you're, you come from Britain, so you can, you can follow this up. Liberal in the English political system meant the rights of the individual, freedom for the individual, now, but that's a nice word, isn't it? So these people are marvelous at stealing words. They're terrific. They're better than any cat burglar. Then they come and they steal one more word, liberal, and they have turned it completely over. So in the political realm, liberal now means not the rights of the individual, but the rights of the state. That everything's given to the state is against the individual. And that's the whole essence of the weakness of humanism. But one of the, one of the essence. And that is, they talk about hu uh, humanism, but it's always humanity as a lump and not the individual. So you come down now, here it comes again. The word liberal. We steal, they steal the word liberal that always had this a very honorable English uh, political connotation, and they take it to themselves because it's a great flag 
even though they're denying the very essence of what liberalism is in line with what the weakness of humanism is. Now, the, the theologians have done the same thing. They came along and they said, we're the liberals. Why? Well, because we're broad. And you people down there who believe what the historic Christian faith has always believed, you hold to a narrower, a narrower statement. That's true. We do. We hold to truth within a circle. Now then, uh, but these people, truth was absolutely as broad as uh, anything. So they took the word liberal. But it's a nice word. But again, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fact. Because they're not liberal. They're only liberal in the sense of anything goes. Turning to the academic community, why is it that so few Christians seem to stand up for their principles there? When you're beaten by the media, or beaten by the professors and called fundamentalist, your instinct, as you're pointing out, is to withdraw. Now, or at least to so um, color yourself like a chameleon that you strip away some things which are objectionable. Now, that, that's the opposite thing. You were talking about the other instinct, which is to sort of uh, become embattled. But the other thing is that you, um, you cloak a few things so you are acceptable. And in fact, the sad thing is that often enough, it's the men and women who have particular leadership ability and good minds who could confront, who have either been silent where they should have spoken, or have simply... Um, doctored or modified what they have to say so that they don't raise a stink. From the point of view of wanting to be accepted? Yes. How are the churches in this country taken over by liberal theology? And I want to keep saying what we're dealing with is fundamental dishonesty. Sometime consciously, sometime unconsciously, but always dishonest. And what happened when the when the churches were taken over by this liberal theology, and this is not, this is not a side issue, because if the churches hadn't been taken over, uh, there would have been a bulk war there. But the churches were largely taken over. And as they were taken over, these men used our terms in different meanings, exactly like the word liberal, like all these words. They came in and they would speak of Christ, uh, they would speak of uh, many things that really to the to the poor man sitting in the pew i've always i've had great sorrow for the man sitting in the pew the man and the woman because they've been they've been fooled they've been hoodwinked the, it was the pastors who destroyed the people if back in the, any of those times you could have had a grassroots vote they would have believed in general the basic things that could constitute historic christianity but gradually, the seminars, which, the seminaries were taken over, the bur bureaucracies were taken over, and these people deliberately—and I mean deliberately—fooled the people. 